Eagles current is one of the strongest currents in the world. It's a western boundary current like the Gulf Stream. It has 100 million meters cubed per second of water rushing by us. It's the western boundary of the Indian Ocean. Um, it flows along the east coast of South Africa until the edge of the continental shelf and then the Agala Strait reflects returning into the Indian Ocean. The big picture of what we're doing really is we're ultimately interested in uh, how the Agulhas transport changes over time. These currents are some of the warmest and fastest currents in the ocean. And so they play a very important role in climate by transporting heat away from the tropics and towards the poles. Hi Paul, it's Lisa in the lab. So uh, our instrument's just taken off from the bottom and it'll be up in another 47 minutes. 47 minutes from 12.12 Zulu. The moorings measure current speed basically, so they send out pings into the current and through a Doppler shift you can get an idea, sort of a three-dimensional idea of what the current is doing. Alright, she's aboard, almost. We have eight moorings up and the Agulhas has claimed none of them, so I'm very, very happy. We've been collecting the data for three years, so We'll basically know what the strength of the Agulhas current is every 20 minutes over those whole three years. So I have this memory when I was a kid of laying in the backyard on my back and it was fall time so all the leaves were falling and I remember watching how the leaves were falling and how they were twisting in the wind and which direction they ended up going and where they actually ended up falling. And I remember thinking to myself, someday I'll know why they're falling that way. That's physics. That is actually a lot to do with physical oceanography. This instrument that we've been lowering into the water contains uh, something called the CTD, the conductivity depth temperature gauge and there's another instrument on there it's actually the colorful one and that measures uh, velocities. The CTDs are very useful even though they're only one point in time we're getting a full column view of, of, of the water of the current. The red line is temperature, the green line is salinity, the yellow line is density and the blue line is oxygen. In my small part of this is that I try to deliver the best data product from the CTD and bottle data so that Lisa could use that to get a sense of what kind of currents or what kind of environment her sensors are operating in. Winch lab, we are finished. Please bring the CTD on board. I must say that the physical aspect of it is quite nice. I enjoy that. It, you know, at the end of the day, you feel like you've accomplished something. It's it's hard work, and it's it's extremely good to go to bed at the end of a long day after you've been dragging heavy equipment and instrumentation around. Having a three-year time series of data for the Agalis current is unprecedented and really, really exciting. The entire Southern Ocean itself is really understudied. And now we think the Agalis current is almost as important for global thermal headline circulation as the Gulf Stream is. So it's very exciting. We think the Agalis plays you know, um, uh, an important role in climate and the way the ocean responds to climate and the way the ocean forces climate. Maybe if you like elongate them the other way, I did. They... Then these would be exaggerated. I have been drawn to mentoring women. You know, I guess I feel like I have more to offer women in the field, being a woman. Sixty meters 24, a minute. Six would be forty minutes. Plus bottle stops. So uh, I think it's really important for women to have role models that are women. And so, obviously, I can, you know, I can provide that for female students. It does help to have a female advisor to feel like, you know, she, she can do it, then I can do it. It's not really uncommon anymore to have women on the ship in either role, as in, in the science party or crew. It's a matter of, um, using the you know the skills and talents you have and and fitting in with the bigger picture. This ship actually has a lot of female science uh, crew. 
think more females than males. Five knots. Yeah, <laughs> it's kick-ass current. All three mates stand a watch of eight hours a day. The third mate's other responsibilities are navigation, voyage planning, electronics on the bridge. With so the plan is to just finish the CTD line yep. and then go back to P1. Myself and my counterpart, we take care of everything that is involved with the science party on board and all of the equipment that they may need to use. It's everything from our satellite communication systems to shore and the computer networks that talk to those, the data collection systems that are tied to all of the instruments aboard. I don't really feel that there's any discrimination in the, in the job um, and that it, the field is pretty much open for women and for women to, to become part of. There's been an increasing number of female oceanographers and female scientists. We have 500 meters of wire and then one set of glass floats and an Nortec. Ocean models are just numbers. And I look at the output of the ocean models that are supposed to mimic real life. So actually being at sea, I, I find it much more interesting. It's much more complex. It's dangerous. I think if we see this world and, and see how much it's given to us, we do want to give back. In the, in the larger sense, the Indian Ocean also captures my imagination. We've only had three major expeditions to the Indian Ocean uh, since modern oceanography began. It's exciting going into a field where there are all these gaps in understanding, where cruises like this are the first of their kind. I find that in this career, people respect you for the work you do. It is a career where you will have to work hard. Go for it. I don't think there are any barriers to women at sea these days. Hey, go get your hands dirty. Go learn how to do things. Go learn everything anybody's willing to teach you about how to get something done. I think if you want to go as high as you want to go, you can do it, but if you have that ambition. Why should men have all the fun? You know, <laughs> I love being on the boat. What drives me is the hope that, you know, in the small pieces that I can contribute towards understanding the ocean better, that that leads to, you know, the big picture of the understanding of climate change and its impacts. It's become you know, extraordinarily clear over the last 10 or 15 years with climate change that this is uh, one of the most important challenges that faces the human race and that faces you know, all the other flora and fauna uh, on the planet. I think the importance of understanding our physical world is as important as the understanding of ourselves. And, and it's been the subject of scientists and philosophers for millennia.